Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF Guy Piano. I'm the author of this thing, the non tinfoil Guide to EMFs. I'm an advocate for safe technology and someone who has created a course called uh, Electro Pollution Fix and many other educational resources around EMFs and how to minimize exposure because it's an environmental toxin that is vastly underrated, underappreciated, and mostly ignored because, let's face it, no one, um, well, no one, most people would prefer to ignore this message and go back to their life and use their devices 24-7 without having this feeling that mm, maybe it's a danger to my health. So if you have went, um, you, you've gone past this thought that uh, maybe I want to keep my head in the sand and maybe you're at the moment where you tell yourself, maybe I should reduce exposure because the dangers of these things are very real. And I've addressed that in so many podcasts. I won't even get into the science. If you've con you're convinced already, the question is, how can I reduce exposure from my phone, right? If you have a phone like this, this is a, an older phone now, iPhone 7 or something. Uh, or if you have a more recent smartphone or an older flip phone, either way, these things have been linked with brain cancer if you put them next to your head. And chances are they're linked with other types of cancer and uh, lots of detrimental side effects if you put it somewhere else. So what are you to do? You, someone that wants to still live in modernity. Well, the good news is I'm going to go back to basics in this episode and I invite you to watch the video version. Uh, it's going to be easier to understand because this will be a demonstration, a very practical episode today where I'm going to show you how to minimize EMFs from your phone. So the first thing I have to mention, the best way to not get exposed to phone EMFs and all that electro pollution is to not use a phone, right? It's kind of, okay, it's kind of silly advice right there. And it's kind of obvious. Still, the reality is more and more people, for many reasons, choose not to own a phone or to barely use it. I'm one of them. I barely use my phone. I use it in case of emergency. Um, so I still own a phone, technically, and a phone subscription. Uh, I use it when I want to find my way around the city, and my sense of orientation could be better. Uh, just ask my wife. I, she's going to tell you that I'm very bad at this. I'm getting better, but for sure, I rely on the phone a little bit more than I should. Sometimes I use certain apps to track things offline, and I use an alarm clock to track things offline, but I don't use my phone in a connected sense a lot. I try to minimize my use. Um, so the best way is to simply use it less often, right? So that's something you can do, in fact. And the more you use it, the more you get used to using it. And a lot of people are stuck in this habit where they look at their phone every couple seconds, which is just straight up uh, horrible for their mental health, mental acuity, and relationships and everything in between. So it doesn't serve you well, just the fact that you use your phone so much. So we have, uh, when it comes to EMFs, it's a bit complicated because sometimes you're a little bit lost about where you should start. There's many sources of electro pollution. There's from cell towers to personal devices, such as the phone or Bluetooth headphones, or many things you, you might have around the home, including a Wi-Fi router. So where should you start? I've developed a system called the 3D system along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. And we have applied the system inside our course, Electro Pollution Fix. But uh, this is not just a teaser. I'm gonna tell you what the system is. It's called 3D, downtime, dis, uh, duration, and distance. So these are the 3Ds. What does it mean? If you wanna prioritize EMF reduction and follow this principle that's also used with nuclear radiation called the ALARA principle, A-L-A-R-A, -A -A, as low as reasonably achievable, this is a principle you should follow, not total elimination, but total reduction to the minimal amount possible of exposure to this type of radiation. 
And it's not like you need more radiation in your life. If you're like me and you live in a city, I live in Montreal still, uh, you're exposed to a lot of stuff that is pretty much unavoidable. So I'm exposed by the cell towers outside. I'm exposed by the neighbors. I'm exposed by people on the subway train that have their phones and do not follow my advice for sure. And do not wear these glasses either when they're in front of a computer. Uh, these are blue blocks, by the way, and I use them to block a type of EMF that in the form of artificial light. So anyhow, the 3D system goes like this. Downtime. Downtime means that your first priority when it comes to EMF reduction is the bedroom. And this office space happens to also be my bedroom, the master bedroom. So my advice is this when it comes to your phone. If you have a phone next to your pillow, it should be on airplane mode. This used to be my advice. And this is what you've seen maybe or you read in my book back in 2017 and beyond. However, new information has come to light that with uh, starting at the iPhone 12 and beyond or around these versions, and that might vary based on updates. Now there's a concern that there's still wireless radiation going off the phone, even on airplane mode, if you still use location services and find my phone. I know this is this is pretty messed up. And it means that if you use your phone as an alarm clock in airplane mode, it's not ideal to have it next to your pillow if you have one of the latest generation phones and you keep it updated. If you do not want to keep it updated, then there's also security um, concerns. So it's it's difficult. It's a bit of a conundrum. And I've decided to do the updates after all. And I know there's even uh, big privacy concerns and things like that. And I'm looking into phone alternatives at the moment, including a brand called Mudita, M-U-D-I-T-A from Poland, who did a Kickstarter a few years ago. And I'm waiting on my shipment of these Mudita phones, who um, they argue are going to be um, better on all levels, but they will not be compatible with um, the Apple app. So it's going to be a struggle kind of getting used to a new phone, but I'm going to record a future video for that. So long story short is if you own a very, very recent phone, I would rather have you turn off your phone at night completely. If you're unable to do that somehow, there's two options. Phone at a great distance from your pillow. So maybe on that uh, office space at, right in front of me, I would leave my phone there on airplane mode if I need an alarm clock, or maybe if you wanna keep it open because you expect calls, or maybe you have teenage kids going out at night, I understand, and you, you do not want to be on airplane mode and you cannot possibly um, kind of take that risk, that's all right. But at least put the phone as far away from your pillow as humanly possible. If it means you're able to put it in another room, it's even better. So maximum distance possible or other room if it's open on, on airplane mode, or you turn it off and you keep it in your bedroom, I don't care. Uh, in that case, you're going to need an external alarm clock if that's something that you use, um, which these days I tend not to use, but sometimes I do have to use it. So in my case, I'm going to keep it as far away as possible. And uh, it's going to also incentivize me to actually not snooze and wake up the moment my alarm sounds. So there's a, there's a plus for productivity for you. So that's downtime for you. The second D is duration. And I've mentioned this at the, at the, right at the beginning. This kind of falls in the category of use your phone less. So if you use it on the ear, it should be an extremely short call. And I do not recommend using it on the ear uh, anyhow because it's just illogical. The dangers are so established. And why would you want to irradiate your head? Same thing can be said. Why would you want to irradiate your groin area if you do a call and you have your phone in your pocket, right? So it's a bit difficult. You should hold your phone at a distance and have wired earbuds in instead. Uh, there's also the air tube headsets sold by, uh, for example, uh, Shield Your Body, uh, or there's a device called the Hard uh, device. That's, uh, and let me just verify if I can do this without screwing up my uh, recording. I did screw up my recording. Okay, not good. 
Uh, anyhow, it's still recording on Zoom, so I'm going to keep uh, that sound going. The sound's going to be a little bit less good than usual, unfortunately. And there's the hard device. There it is. So this thing plugs into your computer or phone, and then you plug your headphones in there in the little uh, jack. Let me just turn off my computer sound so I don't screw up everything. It should still be fine. Hopefully the recording is still okay. Um, so you can use that to reduce phone EMS, but generally speaking, uh, any wired earbud would be better than uh, wireless for sure and better than using a phone on your face for sure. So do not hesitate to create distance and use wired earbuds uh, instead of um, talking on the ear. But Either way, you want to reduce how much you rely on your phone. So use a landline instead at your job or at home. You can, if you can still have those, use a good old uh, phone that is uh, manually uh, that is manually connected to the phone uh, jack and not to the internet. So you don't need the wireless phone. Just use the good old wired headset instead. And let me just do something a second. So note to myself, never unplug something from the computer when I'm recording with Zoom and other programs because I kind of screwed up my entire recording. Either way, just moving on, you want to create distance from your head. Uh, but before you even do that is duration, the second D. So just minimize your phone use as much as humanly possible. Do your calls in front of a computer instead, connected via Ethernet cables um, to avoid the radiation. But do uh, your calls not on the phone if possible. And don't spend all your time uh, streaming things on your phone, which is the activity that's going to expose you to the greatest amounts of EMF pollution. Instead, you can, for example, example, uh, subscribe to uh, you, the equivalent of YouTube Premium or Apple Podcast and pre-download your materials that you want to listen to, including your music, to your phone and then stay on airplane mode and listen to it. So that's something you can do uh, well in advance uh, when before you go to, uh, to your job or before your, you go to your daily commute, make sure you have all the materials you need to listen to and do not have to rely on the cellular network in order to connect uh, and, and stream because streaming, especially streaming video is probably the highest EMF pollution activity out there. So we've talked about downtime, duration, distance. I hinted to that. You create distance between the phone and your head. This is 100% radiation, 100% of the risk. And as you move from your head, you reduce the impact dramatically. But uh, of course, you irradiate your neighbor. So be, be uh, wary of that. So that's why you want to reduce your time of use. Um, the only thing that we know EMF science is that uh, minimizing time of use or not using a phone is a safer thing to do. When it comes to um, creating distance, we know that this works. We know that it will dramatically reduce the amount of EMF exposure to your body when you create distance. It doesn't make the phone safe per se. And I have to mention this, in EMF science, we we do not have a precise idea of what the right dose of EMF is um, per se, what the toxic level is. We do have a better idea when it comes to certain environmental toxins such as lead, for example, or arsenic in food. And even then one could argue that mm, the regulations are probably insufficient and the data is missing. Uh, or insufficient, then we should uh, for we need further studies, blah blah blah. And when it comes to EMS, we do need further studies. But I cannot tell you that uh, even creating this distance from your phone, it's better. But it's not again, it's not no radiation, right? So you just keep that in mind. I don't, I don't want to misrepresent the dangers it represents because in certain EMF studies, we do have a, a loss of fertility in men related to phone radiation at levels that are so low, uh, even at a distance, you would expose yourself to these levels. So to be realistic, uh, not to discourage you, but to be realistic, using a wireless gadgets less often and for a smaller duration, is just the smarter thing to do in the end. So I'm just telling you what the best is and then you 
pick your battles and decide what is the right type of uh, habit for you. And you try, you try your best in the end after listening to this episode. No one is perfect. Um, when you carry it around, I want to make sure that you do not put it in your shirt pocket, in your bra, um, yoga pants or regular jeans or if it's on your body, it should be on airplane mode. And even then, with what I've told you at the beginning of the episode, it should be turned off or carried in a bag. And there are certain technologies. There's Shield Your Body, which is a company. Uh, I interviewed the owner, R. Blank, very recently on this podcast. Uh, in fact, it was episode, uh, let me see, did I take note of that? Uh, 59 and 60. So episode 59 and 60 with R blank, check it out. Their products are very valid. So they have, for example, uh, carrying pouches where one side is shielded and you basically have the phone. Um, you basically uh, have that shield on your body and then the phone is here and will not be able to emit towards your body, but will be able to emit towards the exterior. This is the only design that at a moment I would recommend in a phone case. I do not like uh, flip cases that uh, potentially shield two sides because there's uh, concerns over increase in radiation if you reduce the ability to your phone to connect to a tower. And after talking to R blank, I'm very conservative in my recommendations of shielding cases, but all the products from Shield Your Body I would personally trust. And these aren't uh, perfect solutions by any case um, or by, by any measure. But if uh, I'd rather have you use these solutions and products such as blocking cases from Shield Your Body or other solutions that they offer to minimize radiation, rather than just moving on, ignoring this video and still irradiating yourself 24 seven. So to be realistic, if you're looking to do something, uh, this is something. And these products are valid. They will help you minimize EMF radiation. Uh, and in the end, uh, that plus the right habits will really give you the best bang for buck when it comes to minimizing exposure. So reviewing what we said in this episode, downtime, the bedroom, not close to the pillow, not under the pillow. Do not fall asleep with your phone. Turn it off or another room or as, as far away as possible from the pillow. Second one, duration, minimize time of use in all situations, pre-download uh, content uh, that you can still listen to or watch offline. Uh, that's critical. Very, very important. Number three, distance. Create distance between the phone and your body when you talk on it or when you carry it. So that's a treaty. Then I have two more things to share to, with you. There is such thing as a cable. Yes, these still exist. An Ethernet port, that's cat, uh, what a cat seven, I think. Either way, just a regular Ethernet cable you can purchase at any good uh, electronic store. This is like a 10 feet one. You probably don't initially need that. But if this is connected to your router, it can go in your phone. It can go in most phones, if not all that I've tested. It can go in iPads or tablets. And the ethernet cable, if you try to put it on your phone, oh no, it doesn't fit. So you need a converter. You need those dongles, they call them. Uh, I have one here and I'm not a fan of Amazon that much, but it's, it's handy on Amazon to find those. If you just um, search around the internet for a converter between the port that your phone uses, this is a lightning port from Apple. So this is what goes in the phone. And this end, you have an ethernet port. You, you can even use an external battery or even another lightning to... Uh, USB to plug it in the wall while you use the Ethernet port on this version. Uh, it's around 20 bucks, 30, $30 Canadian maybe. So like 20, 25 USD, something like that. Um, so it's pretty affordable. And what you do is you plug Ethernet in. The Ethernet cable, of course, needs to go in your router to provide you with the internet. And then you plug it into your phone. And normally, if you go under settings, 
in the Apple, at least the Apple platform under settings, you would see Ethernet. That's a new line that exists. And it's just plug and play. You're able to download content, upgrade your apps or update, update your apps um, in seconds. And the, the speed of this thing compared to even 4G, LTE, 5G, it's incredibly fast and reli reliable. It will drain your battery life though. But if you sit at, um, I sit, for example, at my dining table in the morning, looking at news and whatever, having my morning coffee, what I do, I don't even um, get out of airplane mode. I just use an ethernet cable. And now I can uh, do my thing on there without any EMF radiation compared or with a reduction of like 99.99999%. Um, there still might be exposures from find my phone and the location services. So it's a reality that nowadays it's not as easy as it used to be to not have any radiation. I could turn off location services and find my phone too. So that's another option I could do on, uh, and that I would probably do, but it means that the GPS will not work unless you put the location services back on. So you got to play around with these things. If you have an EMF meter, such as, for example, the CEM ProTech 34 that I, uh, I recommend with Brian in the scope of our course, uh, you can test these things out, right? You you just play around with your phone, different options, and you see, does it seem like the phone is emitting more or does it seem like this or that option uh, equals no exposure? So anyway, with Ethernet cable, you get virtually no exposure. So that's something you can do and that I recommend you should do. I think that every entrepreneur out there that uses their phone for professional reasons should have Ethernet cables at home and should consider doing streaming and other professional activities on an Ethernet cable, having the, this kind of dongle and making sure that it's plugged in because the battery drain can be quite sub substantial when you use Ethernet cables. But if you use uh, even an external battery pack and, um, and, and plug it in that dongle plus the Ethernet cable, it means you're connected, you're doing a streaming on uh, YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, anything, alternative platforms out there. You're doing a streaming to your community or just recording a video or some kind of live and you're not exposing yourself needlessly. And also it will be very, um, very fast and you will not get that drop off in signal. So it's also, something that is vastly superior to using using wireless. So I had to, in fact, re-record that part of my video because uh, what I told you before, and you will not hear it because I kind of scrapped that part, but what I was saying is uh, that the phone, the iPhone behaved a certain way. And after recording that video, that is episode 61, the Silver Shield, Dr. Mercola Silver Shield review with the tent behind me, I was in the tent and realized that my phone was still emitting radiation in a situation where I did not think it would. So I had to record it again to give you the right information. What I wanted to show you in, at the end of this video uh, and I'm going to record on my phone at the exact same time. So um, I'm going to make sure the uh, the editor of this video puts uh, the the iPhone somewhere here in the screen. But this may change depending on uh, software updates, uh, new phone, new platform. If you use something from Samsung or Google Pixel or anything else, um, that might change. But uh, it's up to you to try to figure out how your phone behaves. And that's a, that the reality is it's a bit complicated and it will change over time considering these EMF meters uh, sometimes can detect uh, signals in situation where before the phone did not emit. And that's one of the situations that I had heard about, but um, my testing had wrongfully concluded that this was not happening. So anyway... Um, all that to tell you that I'm going to record my screen here, three, two, one. So what I want to um, propose here is that when you get your phone out of airplane mode, turn off the antennas that are not useful to you. So if I click airplane mode, it means that now it's going to search and connect to Rogers 3G, as you can see on the screen. Uh, and then you should turn off the antennas that you do not need. In my situation, uh, I do not want 
the Wi-Fi and I do not want the Bluetooth. So I turn off the Wi-Fi, I turn off the Bluetooth. This used how um, this used to be how it's done. The reality though is that now you have to go under Wi-Fi and turn it off and under Bluetooth and turn it off or else it will keep emitting if it while it were on that uh, little uh, white icon. So it's kind of annoying, but this would be the way to deal with, to manually go under settings and turn both of these off because the button now doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It says we're going to disconnect the Wi-Fi devices and Bluetooth devices until tomorrow, but it does not turn off the Wi-Fi and turn off the Bluetooth. So it's not as practical as it used to be, but the reality is that if on your phone, your phone behaves a little bit differently uh, and you want to turn off the antennas you're not using, this is good advice to minimize EMF exposure. Because again, if you're not using these antennas, why would they be emitting EMFs towards your body? So I'm going to put it back on airplane mode. And this is also true at night where if um, I had previously opened Wi-Fi like this and turned it off, then it seems to behave differently. Okay, but let's say the Bluetooth behaves differently somehow. I'm opening Bluetooth and then Bluetooth is in white. If it's in white like that and not crossed, it means that it will still be emitting. And you can see that when I go in Bluetooth, it is still emitting. And I tested this um, in the tent in a very shielded environment, in almost a no EMF environment. Uh, and uh, we can see clearly that uh, this is the case, it's still emitting radiation. So you wanna make sure that everything is crossed like this, uh, crossed over the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi if you don't use them and you don't want them to expose you. So I hope you liked this uh, video demonstration of how to minimize EMFs from your phone. It's important that you take these action steps to reduce your exposure if you want to just live a good life and remove the amount of stressors that we are all exposed to on an everyday basis. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, thumbs up and share it and subscribe to that uh, YouTube channel while I'm still here somehow. Um, make sure to review on iTunes. You know how to do that. And I appreciate your support a lot. I hope you like this kind of content and I'll be there for you next time. See ya.